Level zero. This is where radiation begins, or where it barely even exists. This level isn't zero, but it's as close as reality gets. You're standing in open nature, far from machines, people, or concrete. Still, the earth hums with it. Rocks beneath your feet carry faint traces. The sky above bathes you in the tiniest particles from the sun and distant stars. Your own body is slightly radioactive, just because it's alive. This level of radiation, it's called background radiation. You breathe it, sleep in it, live in it. Every second of your life, you're exposed to it. Roughly 0.1 to 0.2 microsieverts per hour. It sounds like science fiction, but it's not even enough to raise an eyebrow. You'd need a Geiger counter to even know it's there. No symptoms, no harm, no reason to think about it. It's just part of existing on Earth. It's like cosmic white noise. No one notices it, no one needs to. Level 1. The volume turns up. Slightly. Still safe, still background. But now we're moving into the low range of artificial exposure. You eat a banana, that's level 1. You sip a glass of water, go near granite countertops, walk through a brick building, that's level 1 too. It's the kind of radiation that's all around you every day, with no danger. The reason? Potassium-40, a naturally occurring radioactive isotope found in food. Your body handles it the way it handles salt or sugar, it knows what to do. Radiation at this level is part of your daily routine, and your body's used to it. You might absorb one or two microsieverts a day like this. You could eat a hundred bananas and still not be in trouble. Machines detect it, but your body doesn't care. No risk, no reaction, just atoms doing their thing. Level 2. Radiation here is still harmless, but it's worth measuring. You won't feel it, but now you're in a slightly elevated environment. Maybe you're at a high altitude, flying in a commercial airplane, or you're near a pile of phosphates or certain volcanic rocks. These places aren't dangerous, but they're monitored. At this level, you might get about 5 to 10 microsieverts in a single event. Still not a big deal. That's less than one dental x-ray. Radiation protection guidelines call this low-level exposure. But for sensitive equipment or long-term health tracking, it matters. Hospitals, nuclear facilities, and airlines measure this to stay cautious. You could live here for years with no ill effects. But this is where scientists start to keep records. Not because you're in danger, but because they're paying attention. It's safe, just not unnoticeable anymore. Level 2 means time to start writing things down. Level 3. Radiation here is noticeable, not to your body, but to your safety officer. This is where protocols begin. Exposure at this level can occur during certain diagnostic medical procedures. A CT scan, for example, it might deliver a few millisieverts in one go. That's thousands of microsieverts. Still not dangerous in small doses, but you wouldn't want it every week. Level 3 is the threshold where radiation can start to accumulate in meaningful ways. One dose? No problem. Five doses? Still probably fine. But a hundred? That's where things shift. Radiation is cumulative. Your body repairs damage, but only up to a point. This is the level where workers wear dosimeters. Not because it's unsafe, but because no one wants to guess. You could stand in this for hours with no symptoms. But over time, exposure adds up. And the last thing you want is to find out too late. Level 4. The line between safe and unsafe gets thinner. Here, radiation is high enough to cause real biological effects. If exposure is prolonged, we're talking tens of millisieverts. Still not lethal, still not instantly dangerous. But if you work here without proper shielding or time limits, you're playing with something real. This is the kind of radiation environment found at the edge of accident sites or in certain parts of old uranium mines. It's also what you'd get from a full-body PET scan. Again, one dose, totally safe. But spend a week here, unprotected. Your cells start to notice. You may not feel it right away. No burns, no nausea, no hair loss. But your body's internal repair systems are now on duty. White blood cell counts might dip. DNA strands might suffer subtle breaks. It's not science fiction, it's biology. Governments define safety limits here for a reason. Not because you'll die from walking through once, but because radiation is like sunlight. Too much, too often, and the damage begins. At level 4, experts take the lead. This is a workplace for robots, suits and warning signs, not tourists. Level 5. This is where radiation becomes physically dangerous. 
short exposure is still survivable, but now symptoms start. We're talking about 100 to 500 millisieverts. That's enough to trigger acute radiation effects in some people. You might feel fatigue or nausea or a headache that doesn't go away. These aren't vague symptoms. They've been studied. Nuclear technicians exposed to this level are sent for immediate monitoring. It's not theoretical. This is what people at Chernobyl and Fukushima experienced in the outer zones. Inside this range, your risk of developing cancer later in life increases. And if you stay too long, the symptoms get worse. Hair loss, lowered immunity, temporary sterility, still survivable, still treatable. But now radiation isn't an abstract number on a meter. It's something you feel. This is why suits exist, why lead-lined walls are built, why time limits are strictly enforced. Because at level 5, radiation is not a background feature. It's a hazard. You don't get to ignore it anymore. You plan for it. You track it. You respect it. Level 6. Now radiation doesn't wait to make itself known. You don't need to ask if something's wrong. Your body answers for you. This is where acute radiation sickness begins. A dose in the range of 500 to 1000 millisieverts or half a sievert to one full sievert. If you receive it in a short burst, like minutes to an hour, symptoms can appear within a day. Fatigue, nausea, vomiting, it feels like the flu, but it's not a virus. It's your cells failing, your bone marrow, your immune system, your gut lining. They all suffer. Cells divide fast in these tissues. Radiation punishes them first. Stay in this environment longer, and your white blood cells drop. Infections get harder to fight. Wounds heal slower. Hair begins to fall out in patches. You might not die, but you won't forget it either. This is the dose range that Chernobyl workers received in the hours after the explosion, before they even knew what hit them. They weren't inside the reactor. They were near it. Enough to feel sick, not enough to collapse. But the clock starts ticking at level 6. It's not just dangerous, it's personal. Radiation now speaks through your skin. Level 7. This is where the body starts to break down. Exposures in the range of 1 to 2 sieverts. You don't walk this off. At this level, half of all people exposed without treatment would die, not instantly, but over weeks. Radiation sickness becomes systemic, vomiting within hours, severe diarrhea, uncontrollable infections, your bone marrow stops working, your immune system collapses, you bleed from gums, from the nose, from beneath the skin. These aren't symbolic symptoms, they are diagnostic, and they mean one thing, the damage has gone deep. At two sieverts, the survival rate with no medical help drops dramatically. With treatment, isolation, antibiotics, transfusions, you might pull through, but only if your internal organs hold on. Many don't. The 1986 Chernobyl disaster gave us the clearest examples. Some firemen and engineers, exposed in the early hours, absorbed doses at this level. They were rushed to hospitals, but for most, it was too late. Death came in weeks. Level 7 is not theoretical. It's been lived and died by real people. It's the level where radiation no longer hides behind numbers. It has a face, and it's suffering. Level 8. This is beyond rescue. Radiation doses here are in the range of 3 to 6 sieverts, and the effects are devastating. At 3 sieverts, survival is possible, but only with aggressive treatment. At 4 sieverts, half the people exposed will die even with modern medicine. At 5 to 6 sieverts, almost no one survives. This level destroys the body's capacity to recover, not over time, but rapidly. Bone marrow is annihilated. Cells lining the intestines die off. Nutrients can't be absorbed. Dehydration sets in. The heart and lungs strain to keep up. And worst of all, the brain begins to suffer. People exposed at this level often become confused, disoriented. They lose coordination. They slip into unconsciousness, sometimes within hours. This happened to plant workers and military personnel in the worst radiation accidents in history. Their dosimeters often maxed out, unable to even measure the full extent. Burns appear on the skin, not from heat, but from energy released inside the body. This isn't like sunburn. This is your tissue falling apart. At level 8, there are no mild cases, only slow or fast declines. Hospitals shift focus from treatment to palliative care, pain relief comfort, and ultimately, farewell. 
This level is not survivable in any practical sense. Level 9. This is pure horror. Doses above 10 sieverts, enough to kill in hours. At this level, the central nervous system is struck down immediately. Within 30 minutes, nausea, vomiting, and disorientation. Within two hours, tremors, seizures, unconsciousness. Within a day, death. Not from infection, not from internal bleeding, but from neural failure. The brain itself begins to shut down. Signals misfire. Organs stop responding. This is what happened to the Chernobyl workers who stood on the edge of the exposed reactor. They were blasted by intense gamma radiation in seconds. One man received over 16 sieverts. He was dead within hours. There was no time for treatment. This level doesn't give you a chance. There is no countdown, no recovery arc, just a flash of pain, then darkness. Sometimes the skin appears fine at first, but the body is already past the point of no return. Autopsies reveal liquefied tissue, degraded muscle, massive internal hemorrhaging. This isn't death by damage, it's death by obliteration. The body has no defenses. This level is considered unsurvivable, not because we haven't tried, but because biology just can't keep up. Level 9 is the reason radiation is feared. Level 10. Hypothetical. This level has never happened, but it could. We're talking about exposures above 20 sieverts, maybe even higher. The kind of dose you'd get standing inside the core of an unshielded active nuclear reactor, or at ground zero of a nuclear bomb detonation, moments before the blast. The exposure time? Less than a second. The effect? Instant. Even a glimpse into this level would be fatal. DNA shreds instantly, proteins unravel, nervous tissue collapses, the body doesn't respond, it simply ceases to function. If you somehow remained alive for a minute, it would only be because the body hasn't realized it's dead. But no one has survived this dose, no one ever will. It's considered a theoretical maximum for immediate human tolerance. In labs, this dose is studied only with simulations and remote equipment. No person could stand near it. Not for testing, not for science, not for heroism. Level 10 doesn't belong in medicine or industry. It belongs in war, or in worst-case scenarios at the highest security nuclear sites. It's a warning. A final chapter. The reason we design 10 layers of shielding. The reason nuclear weapons are feared more than understood. This level is death by physics. A dose so fast and complete, it bypasses pain and reaches erasure. If it ever happens, we won't be here to explain it. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to subscribe it for more fun stuff like this.